Hi there, we'll be looking at the vertebrae today. So before we go into the types of vertebrae um, along the spine, we're going to look at some structures that are common to almost all of them. And you should be able to name these structures on cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and uh, sacral vertebrae as well. So the vertebrae, the main function is to protect the spinal cord. And the spinal cord goes through the neural canal that is sometimes also called the vertebral foramen. Below that, ventral to that, is the centrum, also called the body of the vertebra. Enclosing the neural canal is the neural arch. And on top of the neural arch, dorsal to that, is the neural spine, sometimes also called the spinous process. The neural arch is comprised of the lamina, and the pedicles. Think of the lamina like the roof of a house and the pedicles, they're the foot of the archway, um, so they are the walls of the house. The transverse processes stick out to the sides. And lastly, we have the articulation places, the facets of articulation. We have the pre-zygopophyses facing cranially um, on the cranial side of the vertebra and the surface itself faces dorsally towards the neural spine. And the post zygopophyses, you have to angle it up to see them, they are on the caudal side of the vertebra towards the tail and their surface is angled down towards the centrum. Just to run through those one more time, we have our neural canal, neural arch, neural spine, centrum, transverse processes, pre-zygopophyses, facing dorsally, post-zygopophyses, facing ventrally towards the centrum. And of the neural arch, we have the lamina, which is the roof, and pedicles, which are the sides. Starting at the head, the first cervical vertebra has a special shape and name. It is the atlas named, atlas, named for the Greek Titan of classical mythology, who was cursed to hold up the earth. So it is the globe-bearing <laughs> vertebra. And the pre on the atlas have this really curved shape to accept the curved occipital condyles of the skull. The transverse foramina that are unique to cervical vertebrae, you can see from the posterior side, and they actually exit a little sooner. So you can see the transverse vertebrae, the tran you can see the transverse foramina from the posterior and the ventral side. You can also see a couple of holes in the top. These are your lateral foramina, and they have, they carry aspects of other branches of the vertebral artery, as well as some nerves. So the parts of the atlas, if you're trying to tell top from bottom, uh, the smaller part is generally on the bottom. We have a broader section on top. We have still a neural canal. The atlas has no centrum, which is unique to it. It is acentrous, though in reality, the centrum has been displaced onto another bone, onto the following axis but we'll get to that. Parts of the atlas, we have our pre-zygopophyses, our post-zygopophyses, which are a little flatter, neural canal, neural arch. The neural spine is <laughs> a bump, if anything, uh, so generally pretty reduced on the atlas. Wide transverse processes, pretty substantial. and our transverse foramina, unique to the cervical vertebrae. Following the atlas is the axis, so C2, the second cervical vertebra. If we put them together, you can see that this little projection is that displaced centrum of the atlas. That displaced centrum is the dens or the odontoid process 
dont meaning tooth, the tooth-like process. That is extending off of the centrum of our axis. So as we have the neural canal, neural arch, very elongated, broad neural spine, transverse foramina, again, most easily seen from the back, and they exit a little bit sooner there. The transverse processes, pretty reduced. pre a little more rounded. post facing ventrally towards the centrum. The rest of the cervical vertebrae look like our standard vertebra uh, that we used as a placeholder to learn our terms. So neural canal, neural arch, neural spine, centrum, transverse processes, pre-zygopophyses, post-zygopophyses, transverse foramina, the thoracic vertebrae have two unique structures that are unique to them. Just like the cervical vertebrae had the transverse foramina, the thoracic vertebrae have articulation spaces for the ribs to connect. So let's go through our standard structures and then focus on what is unique to the thoracic vertebrae. So we have our neural canal, neural arch, very long neural spine, but not always. The early and the late thoracic vertebrae have reduced neural spines, so don't necessarily rely on that. Look for the specific facets. Centrum, transverse processes, a little stubbier. Pre-zygopophyses, post-zygopophyses. And if you see them overlap each other, we have a very clear connection of the dorsally facing pre-zygopophysis and the ventrally facing post zygopophysis. We also have unique structures that are specific to the thoracic vertebrae. These flat articular spaces, these are full facets, sometimes called costal facets, costa means rib, and they articulate with the tuberculum of the rib. The demifacets, each vertebra has two demifacets, one on the cranial side and one on the caudal side. So we have the cranial demifacet of one vertebra meeting with the caudal demifacet of another vertebra so that we have a full, uh, a complete <laughs> facet. Two demifacets make the, the place where the capitulum articulates. Capitulum on the demifacets tuberculum on the full facet. As these two vertebrae are here together, we also want to take a look at the intervertebral foramina. These little separations caused naturally by gaps or divots, <laughs> notches really, intervertebral notches on each vertebra, create these holes that are essential to the spine. We need to have places for nerves from the spinal cord to escape and go to the rest of the body for innervation or bring information back for sensory input. The lumbar vertebrae are distinct visually by their very long transverse processes, but again, at the for forefront of the lumbar column, they, those processes are not very pronounced. So don't rely on having very long transverse processes. Look instead at the structures that are unique to the lumbar vertebra. So we have our neural Canal, neural arch, neural spine, centrum, transverse processes. The pre zygopophyses, it is interesting to note that they are more basket shaped. They're definitely more curved. So we have a surface that's dorsal and medial. Uh, so this curved structure for the pre zygopophyses. And similarly curved where you have a ventral and slightly lateral structure for the post zygopophyses. So we have a smooth pre-zygopophysis basket here, and then we have this extra material that's forming kind of a chunky process. This process on either side of the pre-zygopophyses are the mammillary processes. 
spelled with two M's and two L's, mammillary. Those are on the cranial side of the lumbar vertebra. On the caudal side of the lumbar vertebra, sometimes you'll have a little ridge extending out. Sometimes you'll have a very distinct process. Sometimes you'll just have a little point like this one where it's defined but not super sticky outy. <laughs> that is the accessory process. Let me grab another one that's a little bit more distinct, but you're going to see still a little projection or at least a little bump below the post hypotheses. Here are a couple lumbar vertebrae articulated together, and these two have very prominent accessory processes. And with that articulation, you can see that really nested structure there um, of the pre and post hypotheses really nestling into one another. The interaction of these processes and the ligaments that attach them help prevent twisting. We don't want twisting or torque of the spine. So that helps stabilize and strengthen the lumbar column. Looking at the sacrum, we have all of those standard structures. Again, the neural canal, neural arch, lamina and very short pedicles, <laughs> neural spines, um, well, neural spines because these are a series of fused vertebrae. So we see three little spines there. The centrum, the transverse processes are fused into this plate here, but you can see them clearly on the back, transverse processes, pre zygopophyses on either side here, facing dorsally, tiny little post zygopophyses facing caudally. The sacrum has two articular surfaces, really rough and crusty surfaces for articulation with the pelvis. Let me slot that in here. Has a nice fit. The articular surface of our sacrum articulates with the articular scar of the pelvis. We can point out these intervertebral foramina, which are a permanent part of this series of fused vertebrae. But just a reminder that intervertebral foramina can be seen in between every vertebra as that space where nerves can escape. There. As you move further down the tail of a mammal, at least, the, the individual vertebrae of the tail become reduced until they're nothing more than a centrum with a few minimal processes, so a few minimal transverse processes, and supportive structures that help to protect vasculature and the nerve that is running down the tail. However, if you look closely at the more proximal caudal vertebrae, not all of them are present, but you can see just a little bit of a structure attached onto the bottom there. The first six or seven caudal vertebrae will have this hemal arch still attached. Um, it often gets lost in preparation, so you won't always see it on an articulated skeleton. We have a few left here. The hemal arch supports the blood vessels that are running down the, the tail. With an animal like an alligator, we, also, we can see a clear neural canal running all the way down to the end of the tail. They also have hemal arches all along the bottom side of the tail, just full support for that vasculature and the spinal cord running all the way down. Thank you for listening. Good luck studying and talk to you next time.